Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today for the finale of our Pokemon Heart Gold Random Card Challenge. In the last episode we took down four more Kanto Gym Leaders to make our way up to seven badges. There are only three trainers left to face and all of them will bring a full team before us. We're going to be starting in Mount Moon with our final rival battle against Silver. As with all of the battles today, we're going to be drawing six cards, and for this one it looks like we'll be using Staryu, Ponyta, Grimer, Nidoran Male, Charmeleon, and Unknown. Hmm. An average base stat total of 348 makes this a little worrying, as we'll be up against a team of fully evolved Pokémon. There's also not a great range of typings here. We've got two Poison types, two Fire types, and a couple of Pokémon who don't cover their weaknesses particularly well. Let's see what we can do with the movesets. Antara is the star used up first, and at level 46, the water type has Surf, Recover, Confuse Ray, and Thunderbolt. That final move is there to deal with any water types that can cause us a lot of problems. Second in line is Shadowfax the Ponyta, who's one level higher at 47, and he has Flame Wheel, Return, Iron Tail, and Flare Blitz in his moveset. Slimer the Grimer is up third at level 46, and he's got Poison Jab, Toxic, Gunk Shot, and Explosion. At level 48, we've got Despair the Nidoran, who's also starting things with Poison Jab and Toxic, but he's changing things up with Return and Shadow Claw. Mellow the Charmeleon's also at 48, and he's equipped with Flamethrower, Smokescreen, Will-O-Wisp, and Hidden Power. That is Hidden Power Bug, and it's there to help with a couple of typings that could cause us some issues. Last up, we've got Zaki the Unknown, who's on race at level 50, and it knows Hidden Power. And that's it. It's Psychic type for that stab boost, so hopefully Silver has brought plenty of poison and fighting types. Alright, one final rival battle. Let's do this. Silver starts things off with Beedrill, and we send in Staryu first. This would have been an ideal spot for either Ponyta or Charmeleon, but Antares isn't the worst option. The Starfish summons a wave that barrels into Beedrill, leaving the bug weak. He summons the strength to use Agility, and that speed boost allows him to attack again immediately. The bee drains Staryu's health with Endeavor, but it leaves Antares with enough health left to attack. Another Surf washes away Beedrill, handing us the first win of the match. Not for the first time, our opponent makes a really confusing call and decides to bring in Golem, an incredibly slow Pokemon who is quad weak to water. Unsurprisingly, Surf makes for an easy one-shot, and just like that, we've got a comfortable lead. Third in line is Infernape, and for a second I thought Silver had completely lost it. The fire type is too fast for Antares, though. Infernape darts in close and blasts Staryu with close combat, narrowing our lead to one. We bring in Zaki next, as that seems to be our best option. Infernape attacks with punishment, but with no stat boosts in play, it hits as a 60 base power attack which can't quite knock off unknown. Hidden Power sends a ball of psychic energy crashing into the fully evolved fire starter, giving us back some breathing room once again. Silver sends in his Slow King next, and that's just about the worst thing possible for us. We have one half health psychic type, two fire types, and two poison types to take on a water psychic type whose special stats both rate in the triple digits. Although Zaki fires off an ineffective hidden power, Slow King makes quick work of the fellow psychic type and cuts our lead back down to one. Without any good options, we send a Nidorina who easily outmaneuvers the lumbering royal to strike with Shadow Claw. It deals some decent damage, but it's not enough. Psychic blows away despair, tying up the match at 3-3. Three we know that Slowking's got Psychic, but we haven't seen any Water-type moves yet, so we send in Charmeleon next. Teaching the Fire Starter that Bug-type hidden power really feels like a good move right about now. That attack leaves Slowking in bad shape, but Swagger puts Mellow at risk, so we recall him and send in Ponyta. Slowking was aiming for Charmeleon, but his Psychic ends up hitting Shadowfax instead. Ponyta lives through the hit though and strikes back with Return to finish off Slowking and hands us a win that feels absolutely key. Just when things seem like they're starting to improve, our rival sends out his penultimate Pokemon, Dialga. Coming in at 680, Dialga's base stat total is almost twice as high as our team's average, but at least the partial steel typing works to our advantage. Shadowfax charges down the legendary Pokemon with Flare Blitz, and the collision actually makes its mark. Dialga is slightly weakened by the hit, but Aura Sphere blows away Ponyta to tie things up. We throw Charmeleon right back into the thick of the action, and he outspeeds the temporal Pokemon to land a Flamethrower. It leaves the diamond mascot right on the cusp of fainting, but sadly it's able to gather itself and attack with earth power. The super effective hit blasts Mellow, wiping out all but one of his hit points. That keeps us alive in the match. Grimer's only potential move to use against the steel type is explosion, so I'm not sure he would have gone far. Charmeleon fires off a second flamethrower to take out Dialga and leave Silver with only one. Our rival throws out his final Pokeball, bringing in his last ever Pokemon, Wigglytuff. 
We recall Mellow and send out Grimer because if all goes to plan, we're gonna need those three hit points. Wigglytuff strikes again and again with Double Slap, but her hands just sort of melt into Slimer's sludgy exterior. Not knowing what's coming next or how long we have, Grimer tries to use Explosion, but in his finest hour, Silver orders Wigglytuff to use Sing. Grimer falls asleep, and for now, the Explosion is postponed. Instead of powering on, though, Wigglytuff is ordered to set up with Defense Curl. That kills enough time for Slimer, who awakens and gets back to the job at hand. Explosion destroys everything in sight, including Wigglytuff, and with a grand total of three hit points remaining, we've made it past Silver. For a Pokemon with 129 HP to take a hit from full health that leaves just a single hit point is pretty incredible, and that's exactly the sort of luck we needed. That's one. Our next stop is Viridian City. The first city you reach in the Kanto games is home to our final gym challenge. The last gym leader standing in our way is Blue, and like I said, we're going to need a full team of six for this one too. For the final Pokemon Heart Gold gym battle, we're going to be using Togetic, Shelder, Dojuo, Dratini, Swellow, and Minan. Well, let's hope Blue doesn't like electric types. We have three normal flying types, a water type, and an electric type. We basically only have Dratini as an option against them, and that's not even a great option. Come to think of it, we're not very well equipped to deal with Ice types either. Having four shared weaknesses against two typings definitely isn't ideal, but maybe we'll get lucky. Let's have a look at our team and see what we can do to deal with these issues. Up first, we've got Glide the Swallow, who's at level 56, with the moves Return, U-Turn, Steel Wing, and Fly. With Swallow's speed and attack power, Steel Wing should help us out against any Ice types. Joy the Togetic's up next at level 55, and she's got Flamethrower, Psychic, Shadow Ball, and Hyper Beam. Once again, we've got some cover for Ice types, just in case. Third in line at level 58, we've got Kiwi the Dojuro, who's equipped with Quick Attack, Acupressure, Return, and Drill Peck. Crespo the Dratini's up next, and he's got the moves Outrage, Thunder Wave, Return, and Iron Tail. The Dragon can't learn any ground type attacks, so we're still not in great shape against electric types. Test of the Shelder's second to last, and he's got Surf, Return, Ice Beam, and Explosion. That final move has been a favourite of mine in this series, and there's a reason for that. It has come through again and again. Our final Pokemon is Surge the Minin, and she's got the moves Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Hidden Power, and Thunder. That Hidden Power is Ground type, and it's really as good as I can do, so that's our strategy if Blue's got any electric types of his own. Alright, one last gym battle. Let's get into it. Blue sends out Weavile, and we start things off with Swallow. An immediate ice type isn't exactly what I was hoping for, but this isn't too bad. Glide speeds towards Weavile, striking hard with U-turn and then returning to his Pokeball before the retaliation. We send in Shelder, who's probably best suited to whatever's coming next. Weavile strikes with Night Slash, but Shelter's high defense holds up well. I was pretty certain that a full restore was coming next, and Testa could probably only get him one good hit, so opted for Explosion. That full restore prediction comes to fruition, and just as Weavile returns to full health, Shelder explodes, eliminating both Pokémon to take the match down to a 5 on 5. We've also burned through one of Blue's full restores though, so this is a win for us. Not knowing what's coming next, we send in Dratini, and Blue calls out Raichu. Seriously, did he put his team together specifically to mess with us? At least we made a lucky call. Crespo resists electric type attacks, so for now we're sticking with him. After a Tail Whip, Dratini blasts Raichu with Outrage, taking the electric type well below half health, but Static leaves the dragon paralyzed. Blue calls for a resisted Thunderbolt, which still weakens Crespo, but not enough to knock him out. Breaking through Paralysis, Dratini attacks again with Outrage, knocking out Raichu and giving us the early advantage. Blue sends in his Hippowd on third, which is rather inconvenient as the only Pokemon we've lost is our Water type. With Crespo paralyzed, the Ground type can outspeed him to hit with Double Edge. The powerful attack easily takes down Dratini to level up the match. We send Glide back in and call for another U-turn just to test out how strong Hippowdon is defensively. As it turns out, the heavyweight Pokemon is pretty strong. We call in Dojuo next, who's also slammed by Double Edge, and with Sandstorm raging, she's only going to get one chance to attack. A thunderous return leaves Hippowdon in red health before Double Edge finishes off Kiwi. We send Swallow into the battle once again, but with a return, he makes it third time lucky and picks up his first knockout. We're all tied up once again. Blue sends in his Moth in fourth, and for the first time, cracks are starting to show. Swallow streaks straight up and then turns 180 degrees and gathers speed on his descent. By the time he collides with Moth in, he's basically just a blur. The super effective fly one-shots the bug, and now Blue's down to two. 
He sends in Skarmory, who is really the ultimate foil for Glide. He has sky high defense and resists all four of our attacks. There's basically no chance of Swallow taking down Skarmory, but luckily we've still got Minum. Even though it's quad resisted, there's no real point in not using U turn, so Skarmory comes to Surge down about 5 hit points. Not knowing that a switch was coming, Skarmory strikes with Steel Wing, but that's resisted too. Minum barely notices the attack and counters with Thunder, which knocks the Steel type out of the sky. Skarmory faints, and now we've got a comfortable lead. Roserade comes in, and for the first time, I actually feel like we're gonna win this. After paralyzing the bouquet Pokemon with Thunder Wave, Surge is hit by a Magical Leaf, but it can't finish her off. We recall the Electric type and send in our final team member, Togetic. Magical Leaf hits Joy, but it's not very effective, and she fires back with Flamethrower. It's not quite enough, but Blue and Roserade have clearly accepted their fate. He calls for Sweet Scent, which seems like a white flag, and we finish the battle off with a second flamethrower. And that's two. Now only one remains. We head to Mount Silver's Peak to meet up with our former self, that guy who went through the first random card challenge and came out victorious. Now we have to hope he drew a bad team and take him down. We overturn the final six cards in the pile to reveal Hitmonchan, Firo, Rotom, Poliwag, Marowak, and Graveler. Not only is that a shockingly good team, but somehow Hitmonchan has once again waited until the final battle of the series to show his face. Overall, we don't have any big issues. Just about all of our weaknesses are nicely covered. Alright, let's check out the team. Leading the line, we've got Toru, the Hitmonchan, who's at level 88 with the moves Sky Uppercut, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and Thunder Punch. The physical special split is an amazing thing and allows me to have Toru go all out with his punches. Snipe the Firo second in line and he's at level 80 with Return, Drill Peck, U-Turn, and Steel Wing. At level 82 we've got Roomba the Rotom who's got Shadow Ball, Thunder Wave, Confuse Ray, and Thunderbolt. Two levels higher at 84 we have Nur the Poliwag and his moveset's made up of Waterfall, Belly Drum, Return, and Dig. Ramekin the Marowak's also at 84 and she's got Earthquake, Return, Aerial Ace, and Brick Break. Last up we've got our third level 84, Granite the Graveler. The Rock Pokemon has Earthquake, Stone Edge, Explosion, and Brick Break in his moveset, so we have our assigned Explosives Expert, as is tradition. Alright, for the final time, let's get into this. I just wanted you all to see Toru in his element for a bit before I interrupted. The fighting type boxed through Red's team with ease, one-shotting Beautifly, Lopunny, Shedinja, and Flygon before finally being kicked out by Arcanine's roar. We got pretty lucky with that random selection with Anura coming in on our side. Although in fairness, Ramekin and Granite both would have been fine too. Arcanine's pace overwhelms Poliwag as he's struck with extreme speed, but the tadpole Pokemon lives through the hit. That allows him to retaliate with Waterfall, taking out Arcanine and leaving Red in a horrendous 1 on 6. Like Silver before him, he leaves it all up to Wigglytuff. This one is over. It's been over for a long time. This is just our victory lap. You can enjoy the fun while we finish the battle. Obviously, unless something goes wrong, we always want to let our full team have a turn in the action, so that's what we did here. Roomba came out first to paralyze the normal type, and after being put to sleep, it returned to its ball and Snipe the Vero came out. A quick U-turn deals a bit of damage and allows us to switch out to Marowak. Obviously, we don't want to knock out Wigglytuff just yet, so take it easy with an Aerial Ace, and then we can recall Ramekin so Granite gets a turn too. Unfortunately, Red doesn't know when he's beaten. In an act of pure masochism, our former self uses a full restore to prolong the misery. Although an explosion would have made for a fitting end to the series, I wanted to go for the sweep and finish without losing a single Pokemon. So, Granite finishes the battle with a couple of Earthquakes. Red breaks out a bit of Morse code parcel tongue and then vanishes. Was he ever even there? He might as well have not showed up for how little damage he dealt. Was that an anticlimax? Maybe. We had a ton of great battles throughout the series though. I know a lot of people doubted the premise of the randomizer to start with, but I hope everyone who stuck it out enjoyed the series. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.